Say hi. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You may know renowned baby photographer Anne Giff for her beautiful imagery, but what you may not know is that she is also a vaccination advocate. Anne is joining me today along with pediatrician Dr. Leonard Freeland to talk about the importance of meningitis vaccines, particularly for students entering college. Good morning, Anna, Dr. Freeland. Thank you for joining me today. That's a pleasure. Yes. Now, um, Anna, can you please share with us what exactly is meningococcal disease? Well, meningococcal disease is a sudden aggressive illness that can literally lead to death within 24 hours. And um, when I was asked to do a series of 15 survivors of this disease last year, it suddenly struck me that the majority of them didn't actually have any legs. Some of, some of these survivors have lost both arms and both legs. And, and so the, the series was actually created to highlight the devastation of the disease, but to also celebrate um, the survivors' lives. And, and it's really important to, to mention that, you know, behind each of the survivors in this series is a family as well. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what inspired you to become an advocate for vaccinations? I've always been an advocate for vaccinations. Um, in fact, I'm a global advocate for the United Nations Foundation Shot at Life initiative, which aims to get vaccines to children in countries around the world where they're most needed. And, you know, I, not a lot of people know this, but globally, one child dies every 20 seconds from a vaccine preventable illness, and that's just totally unacceptable to me. Yes, indeed. Now, um, why should parents talk to their physicians now about vaccination against meningococcal disease? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, one reason is that we recently conducted a poll at GSK of parents and their high school aged children, young adults. And what we found is that over 80% of parents would like uh, their teenagers and young adults to be vaccinated against meningococcal disease, uh, yet only about 40% are having discussions with their teenagers and young adults about the signs and symptoms of the illness and checking if they've been up to date on their vaccinations. Now, the important thing about meningococcal is that it's a bacteria that causes this infection. There are five types of this bacteria that, that cause the vast majority of cases in the United States. And vaccines have been available to protect against four of those types since the mid-2000s. There's a fifth type, which we've heard about. We call it type B. You've heard that there, about, there have been outbreaks on colleges in the last few years. This is from type B, although it also occurs outside of outbreak situations. And two recently new vaccines have been licensed by the Food and Drug Administration to protect against type B. And the Centers for Disease Control currently is viewing the information. We'll be coming up with their recommendations very shortly. And so when we look to the summer, I'm also a parent besides a vaccine researcher. And I always think the summer is the time to sort of regroup, make sure that everything's okay as we sort of get our kids ready for the fall. So based on the information from our poll, that parents want their children vaccinated, yet they're not having these discussions in the majority of the time. Now's the time to do this. Yes. Make sure that children have been up to date with, their, with the vaccines that are currently recommended. Have these discussions with the health care provider and, and get everything you know, tied off in a bow before the, the fall starts and, and, and life gets hectic all over again. And these, these 15 survivors have put themselves forward in this series to raise awareness um, and the families uh, as well. And it's such a such a, an important message. And, and if I can get anyone's attention right now, um, it, let me just tell you a couple of the harrowing stories that I had from parents. You know, um, imagine, you know, I was talking to a mother who was saying she was standing at the end of her child's hospital bed screaming, don't die, don't die. And another parent telling me about every time their daughter came back from surgery, there was less and less of her. And this is entirely vaccine preventable now. So please don't let this happen to your children. Go look at these images and you'll surely be moved to action. Yes, indeed. Those are very powerful stories. Thank you for sharing those. Um, Dr. Freeland, if someone is vaccinated against the meningococcal disease, are they protected against all strains of the disease? Yes. So, uh, as I mentioned, there are five common strains that cause the vast majority of disease in the United States. There's been a vaccine available since 2005 to protect against four of those five types. The fifth type, which we call B, two vaccines have recently been licensed by the FDA, 
and the CDC who sets policy for vaccines in the United States, they're reviewing those data right now and they'll be issuing their recommendations very shortly. So the answer to your question is, is a vaccine to protect against four of the five types? Make sure your child's up to date with that one. Against the fifth type, the Centers for Disease Control is currently reviewing the information and they'll be issuing their, their guidelines very shortly. That is great information. I um, actually have a son who's entering college this fall as well, so this is good to know. Um, now, who is most at risk in the United States? So, the meningococcal disease can strike anybody. There are certain very select groups of people in the United States who are at higher risk, uh, people who've had, for example, their spleen removed because of a car accident or have a congenital immune deficiency. But these are fairly rare, and the information on that is available through the doctor's office and through the CDC. The important thing is that the majority of cases that occur occur in people who don't have identifiable risk factors, and it's unpredictable. We can't predict who's going to get infected, and that's why it's so important to have the discussion with your doctor to talk about what the, what the vaccination choices are and get your children up to date on their vaccines because vaccination is our best tool for prevention, and as Anne has, yeah. has beautifully captured, this is an illness that everybody would like to, to, to prevent and not occur in, in our young people. Yeah, I think it's important to, to get this message across is to recognize the symptoms, um, which echo colds and flu in a lot of cases, and you know your child as a parent better than anybody else, and if you think it's something more serious than that, make sure you get noticed by the doctors. Jump up and down and get noticed, and of course, um, as we've been saying here, check with your doctor and make sure your child's vaccinations are up to date. Yes, absolutely. And I'm speaking of symptoms, Dr. Freeman, and what are some of the common symptoms associated with this disease? So the common symptoms associated with meningococcal disease can start off with something which somebody might think they might have a flu-like illness. Fever, headache, severe nausea, perhaps a little bit of a stiff neck or maybe some sensitivity to light. Uh, and then within hours, they could be extremely um, ill uh, in the hospital. Uh, upwards of 12 to 15 percent of adolescents can die from meningococcal infections within the first 24 hours. Um, and for those who are lucky enough to survive can have lifelong complications, including severe skin scarring, amputations of, of their limbs, severe neurological um, complications, deafness. Ongoing surgeries as yes, well. Yes, and yeah. it's a, it can be a lifelong complications. And so our best tool is to actually prevent the infection before it strikes. And that's why it's important to have the discussion with the doctor to make sure that your child is up to date with their vaccines. And the summer month is a perfect time to do this when things tend to slow down a little bit and we plan to get everything ready for the fall. Yes, absolutely. Now, well, where can parents go for more information and to get their child ready to enter college? Right. So a great source, of course, is uh, our, our public health officials at the Centers for Disease Control. They have fantastic information about um, all vaccine preventable illnesses. And another extremely important resource is, is the parents, uh, the doctor that takes care of their children. So go make an appointment, speak with the doctor, speak with the staff, understand uh, what's available to prevent protect your child uh, in their teenage years uh, as they enter into young adulthood. The healthcare provider is a great resource uh, and they'll be able to provide uh, good, consistent advice and help families make, make the right decisions. Mm. And talk to your college age students, um, your, your co sorry, college age children, um, as you have one, as you said, mm -hmm. and because it's really important that they understand the symptoms themselves because you're not going to be there with them at college. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And um, if you have a child entering college this year, be sure to safeguard them from the risk of meningitis by getting them vaccinated. For more information, please be sure to visit your doctor's office um, with your pediatrician. They will be able to give you all the information you need to know to get your child prepared. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Anna, Dr. Freeland, for it's joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Same. Have a good day.